We're going to interrupt that report now for some breaking news. Iranian state TV is now reporting several strong explosions in Iran. There have been explosions on targets in Tehran. It comes just weeks after Iran launched, uh, launched a direct missile attack on Israel. This escalation comes amid growing concerns about a wider all-out war breaking in the region. I do want to just read you here a quick update from Israeli media. Again, Jason, we're getting all of this in in real time. Uh, a few pieces of military infrastructure near the Iranian capital of Tehran were targeted. Well, that seems to be what is now underway. The Israeli Defense Forces now confirming that they are conduct conducting precision strikes against Iran. Now that that America does obviously have the assets that you were just talking about over there. What, what is the level of concern at the Pentagon for uh, the troops that went over with, with, with the THAAD defense system and, and, and the other American assets in the area? Yeah, definitely a level of concern for the 100 service members, mostly soldiers, uh, who are responsible for that THAAD system inside of Israel. But not only that, Phil, we're talking about American forces throughout the region. The concern is that if this becomes into a regional conflict, you have U.S. forces in Saudi Arabia, in Qatar, in Bahrain, um, UAE, Kuwait, the entire area right across from the Persian Gulf. So those are forces that could be exposed, and that's why the United States is mainly concerned about the force protection of those units. Now, those units are going to have uh, air defense systems, but then you've also got the units uh, that are inside of Iraq and inside of Syria. Excuse me. And what you have there is that those are the ones that have been most exposed over the last year or so to incoming fire from Iranian-supported militia groups. There are, of course, numerous military targets uh, throughout Iran. Uh, a U.S. official I spoke to earlier this evening said if they go big, and at the time the official was not sure exactly how big this would be, it will be harder for Iran not to strike back. And that's what the U.S. is watching very carefully. The U.S. is not involved in this action uh, in any way, but of course, if Iran strikes back, uh, the U.S. will help defend Israel, Phil. Now, earlier we saw an image of a flight radar app that showed nearly all of the civilian planes over Iran and over Iraq and over Syria have cleared the airspace because they understand that this Israeli attack against Iran is ongoing and they don't want to have commercial airliners in the skies over where Israeli jets will be flying. This is now going to be a question of whether or not uh, proxy groups here in uh, Lebanon, Iraq, Syria, as we heard uh, from Courtney Kuby uh, in Yemen and other places throughout the Middle East are going to now be engaged in fighting against the Israelis. That is going to determine where this war goes from here. Lester? And Matt, whether we call this the wider war or not, the fact is that Israel is, is fighting right now on three fronts, in Gaza, in Beirut, and now this attack, which may be limited, uh, but nonetheless, it is a third uh, front for Israel. Yeah, this is a third front. The Israelis, in their statement today, called this the seventh front. I mean, they've been calling this, they've been saying that they've been fighting on seven fronts. Uh, this is really the main front here. Well, when we talk about what the Iranians are doing against the Israelis, you know, they have different, uh, different groups, what they call the axis of resistance. Now, the axis of resistance is Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Hezbollah here in Lebanon, they have the Houthis in Yemen, and you can also say that they have the uh, regime of Syria, uh, Bashar al-Assad. You know, this is something that could really metastasize into a much wider war. And that's why we've been seeing this flurry of diplomacy throughout the entire region for the past several weeks, trying, as we've seen from several visits from diplomats from the United States and really throughout the world, trying to get everybody to back down. But it, it, it really really is, is a question of whether or not this war by the Israelis is going to be actually escalating the situation or causing everybody to, you know, kind of take a, a, a face saving step back. And that is what we're waiting to see. Do we know if there's an American involvement tonight? We don't. So as of now, it, that does not look to be the case, but this is all really developing quickly here. Now, the U.S. has not only maintained that presence of air defense systems, most of those coming from the Maritime several weeks ago. So that's, this was the U.S. Navy firing off interceptors from some of their ships in the Mediterranean to stop some of those incoming Iranian ballistic missiles. But since that time, the U.S. has added another very powerful capability in the form 
form of a THAAD air defense system. Now, that moved into Israel um, over the course of about two weeks. The interceptors are there. These are the reason that these are so critical to Israel's defense right now, Lester, is because they they uh, they target an incoming projectile, in most cases a missile, in the terminal phase of its uh, of its firing. So that's as it is literally heading straight in the last moments before a missile will impact in Israel, the THAAD will launch off and fire it off. It's what the military calls a kinetic kill vehicle. That means it's an interceptor that fires up. It doesn't have a warhead on it. It literally slams into an incoming missile, and then it causes the missile to essentially blow itself up with just that kinetic force. The U.S. has moved that THAAD interceptor, the battery, into Israel so that should, in fact, if this becomes another tit for tat in the, the, the coming hours or even days, Israel will have even more air defense systems in place for a possible Iranian response here. In response to months of continuous attacks from the regime in Iran against the state of Israel, right now, the Israel Defense Forces is conducting precise strikes on military targets in Iran. The regime in Iran and its proxies in the region have been relentlessly attacking Israel since October 7th on seven fronts, including direct attacks from Iranian soil. Like every other sovereign country in the world, the state of Israel has the right and the duty to respond. Our defensive and offensive capabilities are fully mobilized. We will do whatever necessary to defend the state of Israel and the people of Israel. What is the difference now uh, than in prior conflicts? Is this the worst we've seen this region, the most tense we've seen this region? Well, when you have Israel and Iran directly involved like that and firing on one another, and there's always room for miscalculation. There's all, I, I mean, surely Iran knows when they launch those missiles, those ballistic missiles, that most of them uh, would be intercepted, and they were, because Iran is very well aware of how strong the defenses are in Israel, and, and particularly if the U.S. helps out as well. But yes, this is an escalation that nobody wanted to see go this far. Israel is determined to make these wars end. What is the White House saying tonight outside of the fact uh, that they were given a heads up before this strike? And that the U.S. was not directly involved, like Louis was talking about. I think this is an important distinction that the United States is going to want to make sure that the world is aware of. On the other hand, of course, we know that the president and the White House wanted to make sure that the world knew that the United States was very much involved in actively helping Israel defend itself back on October 1st when uh, Iran was uh, launching sort of that attack and that Israel sort of needed its help to defend its airspace. Uh, look, we have a limited statement from the National Security Council basically just confirming Confirming, uh, what we've been talking about. They understand that Israel is conducting the targeted strikes, that it is in response to that attack from Iran on October 1st.